Who is carving the memorial? Bates, sir. The carpenter. Don't mention suicide. Simply say he perished from the hardships and anxieties of the voice. Good Lord, spare thy people whom thou hast redeemed. Enter not into judgment with thy servants, who are vile earth and miserable sinners, but so turn thine anger from us, who meekly acknowledge our vileness and truly repent us of our faults. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Dismiss. Yes, Mr. Sullivan. I'm afraid, sir, the natives have taken one of our boats. It seems they've already rounded the headland. Was there no guard kept? Well, the ship's crew are very lax. And I failed to check, sir. I think we must teach these natives a lesson. Attend to it, Sullivan. Go after them and report to me, sir. Side of them wanting our hostages back? Not the slightest concern, as far as I can see. Very well. Prepare to sail with the next tide. And these? They'll be sailing with us. Where to, sir? To England. To England? What in God's name will we do with them there, sir? In God's name, Mr. Sullivan, I think we shall try turning them into civilized Christians. Like the rest of us. Before facing the homeward passage across the Atlantic, Fitzroy named one of the longest waterways in Tierra del Fuego after his new command. He called it the Beagle Channel. During the summer, nothing gave me more pleasure than a visit to my cousins, the Wedgwoods, at Mayor Hall, an easy ride from our house in Shrewsbury. My 
uncle, Josiah Wedgwood, was the son of the famous Potter. He was a member of Parliament and much respected in the neighbourhood. I greatly revered my Uncle Joss. He was the very type of an upright gentleman with the clearest judgment. Visits to his house during those years were invariably delightful. Life there seemed perfect. Perfect and free. Imagine, Uncle Joss, when I'm an old, old man, I'll be able to tell my grandchildren that I listened to one of Josiah Wedgwood's daughters playing Chopin and simultaneously danced with another. Hmm, surprisingly well for somebody who's tone deaf. <laughs> <laughs> what will you tell your grandchildren about yourself, Charles? That's something of a problematical question at the moment. Mm, your father says the prospect of medicine no longer appeals. Have you decided on something else? Well, father wants me to go to Cambridge with a view to becoming a clergyman. He's very vehement about my turning into an idle sporting man. What do you think? It's just that... It's just that I've never really considered the possibility before. You could collect your beetles and hunt at least twice a week. What could be more perfect? I suppose it might be very agreeable. It might be well for your father to consider whether your belief in the Almighty is strong enough for you to pass on your new enthusiasm for him to this mythical congregation of huntsmen and naturalists. Yes, well, I believe in all that, of course. And the 39 articles of the Anglican faith? To be truthful, I don't suppose I can remember more than half. I think you should take your father's excellent advice and go to Cambridge. There's plenty of time to think about the church once you're there. Which college, by the way? Christ's. The trouble is, Uncle Joss, I don't think I can remember the Greek alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> During the three years which I spent at Cambridge, my time was largely wasted as far as academic studies were concerned, as completely as it had been at Edinburgh and at school. My passion for hunting led me into the sporting set, including some rather low-minded young men. We often used to dine together and sometimes drank a good deal too much. I know I ought to feel ashamed of days and evenings thus spent, but I cannot help looking back to those times with much pleasure. As for my work, it was repugnant to me, and I did little except attend a few compulsory college lectures. Swinging it about like an incense burner fox. It's my duty to be equally unfair to both parties. You stood too close. I claim that was a foul shot. I never had the advantage of your idle sporting upbringing. The perfect target. Double your money. Just look 30 paces. Put that down and pay up. Some of these took a deal of finding. Where in heaven do you collect these, Darwin? I strongly suspect you prefer your beetles to your friends. <laughs> 